Hi, uh, this is a continuation on my video I made yesterday. So yesterday's video was more like theoretical, it's more of a thought experiment. It was just stuff that I've been thinking about a lot and um, stuff I've struggled with and talked about with other people, but I didn't really give any examples of the uh, the theoretical people who are still writing now and are good so I wanted to do that and you know with uh, William Gass just passing away or dying uh, made me made me think about that more because Cormac McCarthy is my favorite author and I think he's I think he's 84 84 years old and uh, Sutri is my favorite book I've read this, I've reread this more than I've reread anything else, and I always, when I just feel like reading something enjoyable, I just pick it up, flip to a random page, and I just read however much I feel like, and I can always enjoy it. Uh, I enjoy every single page in this book. So, uh, and an another way I was thinking is, in the 1920s, after Ulysses came out, uh, there was like, murmurings that Joyce was working on something else called work in progress and there would be some uh, like one magazine transition by Eugene Jolas would publish bits of it so people could get, get snippets and like oh wow that's really neat I can't wait for the whole thing to come out but then it, it didn't come out until 1939 <clears throat> so in that way people had something to look forward to for that long of a time oh Joyce Joyce has something cooking for us uh, you know can't wait for that. So uh, McCarthy has been working on uh, The Passenger, which is supposedly a long book uh, for a while now. It was, the uh, papers for it are already in his Whitliffe collections, which is where all of his manuscripts are that people can go look at, like the archival type stuff. So it's most likely finished, I would assume. I'm guessing it's just some BS with marketers or advertisers. Because I know a movie that uh, called Passengers came out last year, and then there's probably some other stupid reason that they have for not putting it out. But uh, there was a 30-minute reading of it through, uh, I think it was at the Santa Fe Institute that they read, and I listened to that. I've listened to it multiple times, and I can't wait for the book to come out. So in that way, I'm my hope is kind of uh, displaced, or you know, it's once that comes out, I'll be. I'll be uh, scattered for something else. And then uh, kind of in the next generation from McCarthy or maybe two generations later is Evan Dara, who I heard of through uh, Paperbird YouTube channel. And this has been one of the best recent books I've read. I, I really enjoyed it. I've, uh, I, I only read it through all the way once, but then I just turned pick it up and just read it randomly whenever I feel like enjoying it. And I see it in, in the tradition of McCarthy. I really see like, like just before McCarthy, William Gaddis was around, born in 1922. Uh, the recognitions came out in 55. And then, uh, then right after that in the 60s, McCarthy got going, started publishing good stuff. And then uh, McCarthy's still going pretty strong. I mean, he hasn't published anything in... 15 years or something, I think. The Road was 2005, and then 2006 was No Country for Old Men, something like that. Maybe switch those. But uh, then you have uh, Evan Dara, who did this in 95, which is the same year The Tunnel came out by Gas. And then he published something, I think, in the early 2000s, and then 2013, Evan Dara did. So, uh, you know, you have that kind of continuation there. Um, hopefully he's working on something else. But uh, most recently, I found a poet that I really like. He's probably the poet that I like the most, who's uh, like below the age of 80. And it's uh, Daniel Popik, The Police. And I had kind of an interesting background story. I won't go into it too much, but uh, I had a teacher who taught my contemporary poetry class this semester, who's, who I found out after enjoying the book and reading it, that they went to school together in the Iowa Writers Workshop. This Daniel Popik and my poetry teacher. So uh, I was able to uh, 
like send emails to the to the guy because my teacher gave me his email so that's been pretty interesting but yeah his poetry is very good if you want to check him out he has a reading of the poem the police on youtube and that's actually what got me to buy the book because i saw it in a bookstore checked it out oh this is pretty interesting writing then watched the video okay i have to get it i ordered it bought it read it and now i'm doing my final paper for that poetry class on this guy comparing him to like the modernists and objectivists really trying to focus on similarities to Louis Zukofsky which I found out he uh, doesn't he doesn't not like him but he, he's just not one of his like big poets so I think that's interesting and I suspected something like that would eventually happen but um, so apart from these three uh, like these book authors um, McCarthy is my absolute favorite. Evan Dara is who I always say is my favorite contemporary writer. Um, then I wanted to talk about someone else who really I spend more time like with, you could say, than, than any of these others. It's uh, Josh Tillman. He goes by the like stage name Father John Misty. And I, I realize in my head I kind of segment uh, certain sections of interests like I separate literature from classical music, and I think that's a fairly reasonable separation because classical music I like doesn't have any words, no vocals, so it's it's not a literary art. You really understand it a completely different way than you do literature. Um, but then I look at like some music, and I don't consider songs poetry, basically ever, because uh, they're really separate traditions. But uh, I really like uh, Josh Tillman. He has some stuff under that name that he did before this Father John Misty style. But uh, his Father John Misty style is like, I listen to it every day. Like today, I probably listen to it for maybe an hour. If I drive anywhere, it's either John Fahey, like, you know, guitar music or Father John Misty. Or I do like, you know, Scriabin's Piano Works. I think those are probably the, mo the three most uh, common of what I listen to, but yeah, so with Father John Misty, he just put out an album, uh, Pure Comedy, and uh, the eponymous song is pretty good, but the songs I've been really loving recently are uh, The Memo and In 20 Years or So, and uh, the thing that really got me with uh, this recent album is he had planned it before uh, the recent presidential election and anything else, but it's like, uh, I think certain people, one way or another, just end up, like, of their time. And I don't think it's a choice, hardly ever, but, I mean, maybe it's not certain people, maybe it's everyone, but there are only certain people who can, uh, like, describe it or create something that uh, exemplifies it. Because um, I remember, like, when I was 15, I was really interested in post-apocalyptic stuff, and I would write my own stories and stuff. And then, like, The Walking Dead becomes the next big uh, TV show. So I'm like, yeah, I must, I must have somehow felt that, like, feeling, like, the, the death throes of the Republic or something. <laughs> the downfall of America, something like that. But then... Uh, you know, then you get to uh, Father John Misty. He makes, like, really funny songs. and But they always have such perfect uh, meanings to them. And uh, he's one of the guys that really gives me the most hope as a contemporary, like, a, as a contemporary human being. I tried to get, uh, you know, tickets to his shows, but uh, one way or another, life circumstances prevented me from going. But, um, yeah, he's... He's really one that gives me a lot of hope. So if you haven't listened to his stuff and uh, you don't have much hope in contemporary writings and stuff, I would really, I'd give him a listen. Uh, he's my favorite uh, songwriter of, uh, you know, ever, really. So, uh, yeah, hopefully that helps anyone who's like me and really has a hard time enjoying contemporary things. Uh, this was an attempt at hope. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, thanks for listening. Death is a gang boss.